year old male here for pain in the left shoulder about a month ago. He was doing some heavy lifting, about 50 pounds, and difficulty with motion in the shoulder. Uh, he had, on the physical exam, he could only really raise it to about 50 degrees in both abduction and flexion. Um, pain with any kind of resistance, any pain with any kind of resisted motion. Uh, he has a pacemaker, so he can't get an MRI. Uh, we did an x-ray, which didn't show a whole lot, maybe a little bit of osteoarthritis at the acromioclavicular joint. So I'm going to go ahead today and just kind of look at the shoulder. Here we are looking at a normal shoulder with the subdeltoid bursa wrapping around the cuff. And now we're going to remove the subdeltoid bursa. And this patient has a high-grade tear of the infraspinatus tendon, I believe with a full thickness component as well. Also has a complete tear of the supraspinatus tendon, which you can see here. And also I believe he has a high-grade tear of the subscap tendon with a full thickness component as well. Therefore, the biceps tendon subluxed into this subscap tear, which you can see as the proximal biceps tendon sublux medially. Here we are just wrapping around again. We see the posterior component of the shoulder. Don't see any supraspinatus tendon. You can see this full thickness tear of the subscap tendon, as well as this medial subluxation of the biceps tendon. Also, you can appreciate significant retraction of the supraspinatus tendon with also some retraction, but not as significant of the subscapularis tendon and infraspinatus tendons. Also, you can appreciate significant atrophy of the musculature of the supraspinatus muscle and infraspinatus muscle, as well as subscapularis muscle. Here's our first clip, upside of the screen is medial. You can see the biceps in the groove, looks like it. Why are you seeing it? And here you can see what looks like a biceps tendon, but it could be just compressed tissue from some of the ligaments within that groove, and I wasn't sure at the time. Not a great picture of the biceps. I'm not sure if I'm just seeing some kind of scarring. And here it appears to have a biceps tendon with a split through the middle of it. So we got the pec major tendon coming in. You can see the pectoralis major tendon inserting on the humerus. And here you can see the biceps tendon, which is medial to, to where you would expect it. Some fluid around it as well. And as you're going proximal, you can see how that biceps tendon is even more medial, which is concerning for a tear of the subscapularis tendon. And I'm looking at it, I think this is the biceps tendon that's subluxed medially. Again, here you can see how it's medial and kind of pushed away from the lesser tuberosity, consistent with subluxation. This looks like it's out of the, it's out of the groove. And again, here you see the biceps tendon again. And you can see the corcohumeral ligament. And again, here's that tissue that's compressed within the bicipital groove that looked like a biceps. Let's try to look at it now in long axis. And again, we're more medial than we would normally be, consistent with subluxation of the biceps tendon. You can appreciate that fibrillar texture of the biceps tendon. Biceps tendon surrounded by all that fluid, and again, I'm medial. I'm pretty much, much more medial than I would expect. Actually, can you make a muscle for me? Make a muscle. You really don't see a Popeye sign here? Good. Yeah. Just push up against me now. So he didn't pop the biceps, he just has subluxation of the biceps, secondary to a tear of the subscapularis tendon. Push me away. And a subscap tendon in long axis. Left side of the screen is medial. And again, here's a very thin looking subscap tendon, consistent with a high grade or full thickness tear of the subscap tendon as well. So it looks quite thin, the subscap tendon. Really not seeing much of a tendon here at all. It looks like we're just seeing some of that overhanging subdeltoid bursa on top of it. And here you can see some fibers within the subscap tendon region, so he does have some of that tendon remaining, so probably full thickness but not complete tear. And here we are scrolling through, and it looks like he does have a full thickness tear in this region, as you really don't see much of a subscapularis tendon attaching to the lesser tuberosity. Again, here in these sequences, you really can't make out much of the subscap tendon. We are now looking at it in short access, tino 2. And here you're just seeing a very thin layer of compact fibular structure above the bone. So he does have some of the tendon left, but again, I think it's pretty high-grade 
tear, full thickness tear, much of a tendon. Here we're going medially, you can kind of see some, I think, of this biceps tendon for a 1303. So as you go higher up now, even though you're in a sagittal plane with the probe, the biceps tendon is going to be in cross section as it curves over towards the superior aspect of the glenoid. Again, here you can kind of make out the biceps tendon vaguely. And here you can appreciate an large isoechoic subdeltoid bursitis sitting on top of a very thin subscapularis tendon. If you put your hand here to a modified crass position, now we're looking at the supraspinatus tendon in a long access view. The left side of the screen is kind of medial slash posterior. So I'm just seeing like a large bursa, kind of like a isoechoic subdeltoid bursitis. And again, here's a very large subdeltoid bursa that's essentially just pushing down and almost hitting the humeral head, and there's really no supraspernatus tendon. You could see some of the wall of the subdeltoid bursa that's compressed on itself that may appear to be part of the supraspernatus tendon, but really that's just part of the periversal fat of the subdeltoid bursa. You don't want to mistake that for supraspinatus tendon. It essentially has a complete tear of supraspinatus tendon. Let's look at this now in short access. Right side of the screen is posterior. Looks like we're just seeing some residual contracted tendon, but I'm not seeing any obvious rotator cuff here or supraspinatus tendon. Can't see the biceps either because it's sublux, so the biceps you would expect it on the bottom left corner of the screen for a 1306. See that large subdeltoid bursa as well. Uh, you can see the periversal fat. You don't want to mistake that for supraspinatus tendon. It's essentially a void where you would expect a tendon. And I think we're just seeing this kind of large subdeltoid bursa overhanging. And we're looking at the infraspinatus uh, in long access. A little calcification there in the distal tendon. I think the infraspinatus is there. Let's see. And here you can see some calcification in the distal tendon. I think there's at least a high grade partial tear. There may be a full thickness component to this tendon tear. We'll look at the infraspinatus now in sh short access. Right side of the screen is inferior. Infraspinatus does look atrophic. And here you can see hyperechogenicity within the infraspinatus muscle in a short access view, concerning for atrophy, which is also concerning for a full thickness component to this tear. Here we are going to the distal tendon. Now we're looking at the uh, musculature again. You can see this increased signal in the infraspinatus muscle consistent with atrophy concerning for full thickness rotator cuff tear of the infraspinatus as well.